What's going on, guys? I said that we would have wide receiver of the New York Jets, Jeremy Curley, joining the show. And we do. Jeremy Curley, thank you for being on the show. Thank you for having me. Now, last week, had your first game of the season, six receptions, 33 yards, and a touchdown. How did it feel getting back out there on the field with your teammates? Man, it felt good. Um, kind of shake the rest off a little bit. good to be out there man. right and uh you were drafted out, out of tcu in 2011 you went to school in huddo texas for the huddo hippos and a little interesting note you were recruited by texas and stanford university to play baseball but you chose tcu to play football uh which obviously worked out for you what went in what went into that decision um i mean honestly man looking back on it now <laughs> I kind of wish I would have stayed in touch with baseball a little bit, man. I, that was my first love. That was like my baby. But uh, I might have got bored with it. I, I honestly didn't really, I didn't really feel like, I, I've been playing baseball since I was three years old, so that was my first sport I ever played, so it was hard not to fall in love with it. But I just got tired of it, man. Football was, it was exciting. It was something that, you know, I guess was, was trending at the time. <laughs> In my high school or in my hometown, so right. I kind of fell off a little, with baseball a little bit. Right. And during your time at TCU, you won a lot of games, and ultimately you helped TCU join the Big 12, 12 Conference. Uh, you're a great receiver for TCU, but you quickly became a household name uh, because of your kickoff and punt returns. And it feels just like yesterday you had your video game punt return against uh, Colorado State. And we showed it to you just moments ago, worth an upper look because after all, this is number one. Jeremy Curley for TCU. There are 69 yard punt returns for touchdowns, and then there are 69 yard punt returns for touchdowns. That's one of the latter. TCU a winner, 44 to 6. Look out for those horn frogs. I remember watching it and seeing what you did. Uh, what are some of the things Coach Patterson and TCU taught you that helped you become the player that you are now? Uh, I mean, one thing it really taught me is this. I was the first thing that I learned going there. I was undisciplined. I was, uh, I was so, I was so selfish. I was, you know, caught up on myself. You know, every high school kid kind of is, you know, high school, you the man wherever you at, you know, and, uh, when I came to TCU, you know, I, I found out that I had to quickly humble myself. So, you know, along with Gary Patterson and then, you know, the biggest part of it was, you know, having my son, having my son at the young age. I had my son when I was, you know, in my first year. You know, I was 19 years old. Right? So it was it was kind of like a, you know, you got to grow up quick type of situation. There's no more time for, you know, funny games. So that's kind of what molded me into, you know, being a, a better player. Right. And uh, now you were drafted again in the fifth round of the 2011 draft by the New York Jets. And since uh, you've had success, which led you to agreeing to a four year, 16 million contract uh, extension a few months ago, what was, uh, what made you want to stay in New York other than, you know, it, it being in New York? Um, I, I think, you know, at the time it was just about, you know, loyalty and, and and what was best for my family, you know, and uh you know, the coaches that the coaching staff that was there and, you know, the old GM that was there, uh you know, everything just felt it felt good, you know, and for the team that that drafted me and for the team that believed in me, I felt like, you know, it was the right thing to do to just extend my career everything was going good you know my, my family was happy there you know I was happy being you know where I was and, and the, the position that I was in so it's everything felt right so it only felt you know it only felt right to sign that contract experience. right uh and now playing in playing a receiver position in the in NFL is already tough as it is. Getting timing with the new quarterback is tough, but playing with six different quarterbacks in just five years is ridiculous. How have you been able to manage that, and what do you tell the quarterbacks when they're stepping in? Um, I mean, you just... <laughs> I only dealt with one quarterback in college, two offensive coordinators, you know, and then coming, coming uh, 
getting drafted to the Jets and just adapting to the NFL. You know, like I said, I've been with four coordinators and six or seven some of our quarterbacks. It's just uh, he learned to adapt quick, you know. And for the most part, man, is is you can't change yourself, and that's something I never do. You know, for anyone, I can't be what someone else wants me to be. I can only be me. So you kind of learn to, you know, just roll with the punches and how they go. You know, it doesn't take long to build a rapport with a quarterback, you know. And the quarterback usually does a, a good job of adapting to the players that they have. Um, now, you were out the past two games due to a concussion you suffered in preseason, but before last week uh, – or excuse me, uh, before playing last week versus the Philadelphia Eagles, you had a good game again with six receptions, 33 yards, and a touchdown. How do you look to continue this performance throughout the season? Um, you know, just, just building on the things that I know I could, I could build on. Uh, better in myself every time I step out on the practice field, knowing that's going to carry over to the game field. That's, that's what I try to do day in, day out. All right, and with veteran receivers Brandon Marshall and Eric Decker being in, uh, acquired by the Jets in the past two years. What are some of the things they have taught you? Um, I, I think some of the things that, that I've learned from uh from those receivers uh, and those guys is uh you know definitely how to how to maintain and how to how to juggle being at being at the, the highest level, performing at the highest level. You know, and I take I take you know advice from from everybody, not just a ten year vet like Brandon or a six year vet like uh, Eric. You know, I take advice from a rookie that just came in because everybody has different perspectives and everybody has you know different objectives of, of what they're trying to get done or what they've been through. So, uh, but you know, just to talk about Eric and Brandon, you know, those are guys that you know have had the most success. Uh, be to stand in this league or, or like Eric going to a Super Bowl. So, you know, whatever they have to say or, or any type of knowledge that they can spread or give, you know, is, is worth listening to. Right. Uh, and now, you being a little bit older, growing in the league, do you keep up with some of your former teammates in Andy Dalton, Jimmy Young, Jerry Hughes, and also Gary Patterson? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I do. Um, like I, I'm built on loyalty, man. So if I mess with you back then, I'm gonna mess with you now, man. You know? uh, but uh, you know, Andy Dalton, he's obviously he's doing good. Congratulations on you know his family and you know the contract extension. Uh, Jerry Hughes will get a chance to run into each other in a, in a couple weeks. So I'm pretty sure I'll be talking church to him. Right. Jimmy Young, man, he's doing good. He just uh, I think he just had his second child. Uh, I want to say he's back there in Louisiana. So, right, and you also have a new clothing line called JK11. Give us a little information on that. What got you started with that? Um, I, I, I look at myself as, you know, a basketball guy. Like, I like to look good. I like to dress good. Um, it makes me feel a certain type of way. And, you know, growing up, Growing up, basically poor, you know, you didn't have a lot of opportunities to, to to dress the way that you want to or look how you want to. So now that I have, you know, different outlets and different opportunities in my life, you know, I want to take advantage of those and present myself a totally different way. You know, not in the way that everybody else wants me to look or what everybody else deems is looking good, but what makes me feel good. Yeah, but I think, uh, you know, JK11 is, is, is definitely something that lets me you know, kind of express myself, and, and it is just starting up right now. So you know, it's it, it's guaranteed to you know get kind of <laughs> get kind of crazy, so to say. Like you know, the vibes and stuff on whoever it's headed to. But um, yeah, man, it's, it's it's definitely my ability to just express myself and be creative, do clothes. Right, and I definitely like designs. I'm going to go cop me one pretty soon. Uh, I just want to say I truly appreciate your time being on the show. Thank you for being on here. Again, you guys can follow Jeremy Curley on Facebook, Jeremy Curley, and also on Twitter at jcurley underscore 11, and on Instagram, Jeremy underscore Curley 11. You have a big game, uh, divisional game, 
against the Miami Dolphins this upcoming week in London. Are you excited for that? I'm very excited. My first time in London, but uh, not really looking forward to having a big vacation. Hopefully, be excited for this big victory. You know, after we leave, I can visit London again in our offseason. Definitely. Uh, again, thank you, Jeremy Curley, for your time. Thank you for having me.